Hello, in this video, I'm gonna go over how I would learn cloud security. Now lately I have been thinking about becoming a cloud security engineer. I realized I need to upgrade my skill, so I devised an entire plan on how I would change into cloud security. Whether or not I actually do this is another story as I am a passionate mind changer and come up with plans and never really execute on them. I've changed the direction of this channel like five times. I have over 700 video ideas. It's just how my mind operates. If you are new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and this channel is all about helping you land a job in tech. Go ahead and smash that like button. What exactly is cloud security? Well, there's a lot of different moving parts in cloud security, just like the word cybersecurity. Under cloud and cloud security, there are tons of different various services and different ways of implementation and different cloud providers, and they all provide something different. First step that I'm going to do or will do is that I need to find a focus. Saying that I want a job in cloud security or even cybersecurity is, is a good stepping stone. You know, I have a, a broad niche. Now I need to figure out what part of cloud security, honestly, in order to answer that, I, I kind of have to get a feel for the entire thing. So what I would do is I would learn the foundational knowledge of two different cloud providers and I would get their foundational certificate. In this one, I chose Azure and AWS. And those foundation certificates probably won't take more than like two weeks each. Different industries use different cloud providers. So, I mean, if you're working for Google, you probably want to go with Google Cloud or if you're working for the banking industry and they're using AWS predominantly, you're going to want to learn AWS. So I would do some recon, check out what cloud service provider that your company is working at. I do also have a video that goes more in depth on Azure, AWS, and GCP and which one I would choose and my reasoning behind why I would choose it. You can check it out here. Some people are would make the point cloud certificates and cybersecurity certificates and IT certificates are a waste of time, but I find them to be extremely useful because number one, they give you structure and what you should focus on. And they also are kind of like a marketing tool. It just, if you have this certificate, you can make it through the ATS system. If the hiring manager probably looks at your resume for a total of 12 seconds, and this is just a quick way of validating that you do have that knowledge. Next with part of the focusing, I would go through various job postings and figure out what are the most commonly known technologies. Because I have previous IT experience, I can often decipher pretty quickly from noise. A lot of job descriptions are just poorly written, but if you go through about 100 or 200 of them, you're going to get a good sense of what a cloud engineer does or a cloud security engineer or cloud administrator does, and you're going to start to find common themes. The technologies that I came up with that I will need to learn on top of the foundations are Python, and this is something that I have been procrastinating, but I'm now in a class learning Python, Kubernetes or Docker, hands-on experience with AWS and Linux, basic security knowledge that you could probably find in the CompTIA Security Plus. And the reason I'm doing this is remember, just ignore the one to three years of experience, just about solving the employer's problems and how you are the right person for that job. My next step to learning cloud security and landing a job in the cloud is that I would build a plan. And I do this based on SMART goals. The goal is to get a daily plan of how exactly you're going to execute on this each and every single day. If you don't know what SMART goals, it's S for be specific. What exactly do you want? In my case, I want to become a cloud security engineer. Measurable, how will I measure my success? And that will be landing a job and my milestones are gaining those certificates and building a home lab. Achievable, is this goal doable? Can I land it? And the answer is yes, I know that I can do it. Is it relevant? Do I even want to do this? Does it align with my broader goals? And the answer is yes, yes. T, it needs to be time bound. So how long do you have to achieve it? And honestly, for me to learn cloud and become a cloud security engineer, I would give myself about six months. And that is because I have a lot of other commitments like my cat that is really needy and takes up all my time. My next goal to after learning the foundations of AWS and Azure in depth is I would learn the security for only one. So 
In my case, I would learn AWS because my industry is really big on AWS. So I would learn the security of that. And the way I would do it is I would go and try to like set up each one of those services and then play around with it. So even if I'm not successful in setting it up and learning everything about it, I still have context. And that is what you need. You need context and something to anchor like new knowledge on. So it's really hard to build a full fledged home lab without context or really any like knowledge of all of the services that exist because you just don't know what you don't know. So I would go in depth to each one of these services, learn them, and then I would be studying for the AWS security certificate. You learn about incident response, logging, infrastructure, IAM, data protection, and I'm already really familiar with the concepts, so I don't have to learn that. However, AWS specific, you know, there are different buttons that you have to use and the services of the names are different. So the next step after passing this AWS certificate is I would go into the other skills that were listed. So I would learn Python and this I'm actually learning technically right now, but I would go more in depth on how it applies to cybersecurity and AWS and a really good source that I have found beyond schools and lectures is brilliant and it is like an interactive game so it makes it fun so if you have the attention span of a two-year-old like myself it is a great place to start because there are no lectures and it you just understand the broad concepts of it so I find it very helpful I do have a link below in the description if you want to check out brilliant great I would also learn Kubernetes and maybe the basics of Docker and like play around with it, set up some home labs and stuff of that sort. The next step after doing all of this is I would gain experience within the cloud and cloud security. I would gain experience is by building a big, beautiful home lab and documenting every single thing I was doing, why I was doing it, and really just playing around with the technology and trying to set up different environments, doing different tasks. So maybe set up a mock enterprise environment maybe like doing an audit on it, or maybe I could try to find vulnerabilities or maybe even remediate vulnerabilities on some of the, maybe set up some insecure boxes or something of that sort. I don't know, I haven't really thought about it. Because I am infrastructure, I would definitely focus more on the networking services and maybe IAM. However, if you want to do more software or data, there's definitely services that you can go into depth on that. I personally ha would hate to do like databases and like data privacy, but maybe you absolutely love that, in which case you could do that. They also have compliance tools, a great place to start. Some really good resources on building a home lab are, the first one is building virtual machine labs, and you can build this in the cloud, of course. This is a free book by Tony Robinson extremely useful if you are new to IT and cybersecurity and cloud. I suggest going through it and then setting it up because you'll probably gain better experience and you'll have something to anchor your knowledge on uh, when learning. The next resource is the OWASP Cloud. If you know what the OWASP top 10 are for web applications, your life will be a little bit easier. Cloud, I mean, it still has the, the same vulnerabilities, uh, but even more so because there's a lot of microservices and then all of those have vulnerabilities. So a good resource for this is the OWASP.org. They do have one for cloud. It is in the workings though, so I don't think it's complete. Maybe it will be when you're watching this video on how to learn cloud security. And then once I did that, I would post my big, beautiful home lab for the cloud all over the place on LinkedIn, on my resume. I would use it as a talking point in my interviews, but also remember I have a lot of experience and also I have worked in the cloud before. So it makes it a little bit easier to leverage my previous experience to learning and gaining a cloud security job. Now cloud security isn't exactly entry level. So if you're looking for an entry level position, it, it probably is not cloud security. That doesn't mean you still can't learn it. If you liked this video, go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. I have tons of other videos on cybersecurity, IT security. Right here are some playlists, so go check those out, and I will see you into the next video.